Hello, and welcome back. I am Student Dave, and we are back. This is the next episode. I cannot spell my own name. Uh, we have given up on the uh, iPad. It is not glorious Technicolor. I don't know. Well, I might use it for some multimedia stuff, but it made me grow hair all over my face and made my head blow it up, and it kind of like messed with my eyeballs. It actually made my eyeballs enlarge, and it gave me a mustache, and so I, I didn't like it. Um, but basically... Uh, what we're going to talk about today is something that I think a lot of people are interested in. I've got a lot of uh, requests for it, and that is the particle filter. Yes, this is a very, very good tool, and uh, sorry I've not done one on this yet. I really like it, and we're going to do what I did before. We're going to go through the concept, we're going to do an example, and then we're going to do a MATLAB implementation, okay? Okay, so uh, look at this. I'm all modern now. I, I, I get full papers. I don't have to rip them up anymore. <laughs> okay, so before, so before I show you the particle filter, let's review the ideas we've worked with before, right? We need to know where we've been to know where we're going. So what we have here is we have the, uh, we start off with the recursive Bayesian filter, right? We have the probability of some hypothesis at time t, given the hypothesis at t and minus 1, and our data, right? Then we upgraded, we became more modern ninjas with the common filter, and we had the probability of a hypothesis T, <clears throat> given the hypothesis at T minus one, and some action data, I mean some action command, and then some data. That was our common filter. Now that was a linear common filter. That is, it was linear, and the, the uh, hypothesis was being combined with the action command, and it was Gaussian. And the reason we use the Gaussian is because when you multiply a Gaussian times a Gaussian, the prior times the likelihood to get your posterior, it's also a Gaussian. It's this like uh, conjugate distribution, conjugate prior, uh, that'd be the conjugate prior, and basically allows you to always stay within that family of distributions. And therefore you get this nice closed form solution that is actually a very rapid calculation and very accurate. Now, we could get away with, in a lot of cases, these Gaussian distributions, this Gaussian noise and things like that. A lot of things are like that. But a lot of things also are not linear. And that's a problem, because this, this model is very limited to just a linear model. Now, there is other models, the extended Kalman filter, that uses, uh, basically kind of projects the linear uh, the nonlinear system into a linear system. We'll do an tutorial on that. But today we're going to look at the particle filter, which kind of doesn't really use a model. It uses a simulation. It's a Monte Carlo simulation of data to then get these estimates. It's exactly the same in terms of these input outputs, but it uses this kind of sampling method rather than doing any explicit functions, so it avoids this linear issue. Now, let's, let's get some context to that. Let's go back to our friend uh, Wally, right? We had our dude, Wally, with a Y, and he was like chilling, right? And like here's his eyes, so he's chilling with eyeballs, and there's his body and stuff. But you know what? He got a girlfriend. His girlfriend name was named Evo. Uh, she's like super progressive. Uh, maybe she's so progressive she's got like this retro ro robot look to her now. She's like all retro. And um, <laughs> I'm getting dangerously close there. All right. And she gave him wings, right? Because like all the robots in the future have wings. They don't drive around anymore, right? And so Wally's like super cool now, and maybe he doesn't have a Y, maybe it's like an accident like Wally, and he's got this super hip mustache, he goes to art shows, maybe he combs his hair like that, and now maybe he lasered in the word like human onto him, to be ironic, I don't know. <laughs> so that, that's our new Wally, right? And he travels around with like jetpacks and, or maybe some kind of anti-gravity system. Anyways, before what we had is we had this function, right? And we go, where are you at, Wally? Okay, we think you're here. This is our X, this is our HT. And we're like, okay, Wally, Wally, where are you going? I don't know if that was French or Spanish. I don't know what that was. Anyways, um, then we're going to go and create a new distribution where we think you are. Then what we're going to do is we're going to add in our new estimate of where we think we are. And that's going to be based upon, instead of a GPS, right, that was a global positioning system. Now he's using universal positioning system. He's using this thing we call now UPS in the future. And so say he says, oh, actually, I think you're here. And then we combine those to get this new estimate of where we think we are, right? So we have this action command. We had this estimate. And then we have the information. Maybe this is our data coming in. And this is our final estimate, H of T plus 1 or whatever. Now, that's because we had a closed form solution, right? It was a nice Gaussian linear summation and we got our solution. But let's say, let's say, you know, Evo's real hardcore and Wally's kind of, Wally's kind of wild lately. 
And so what she did is she built in an algorithm into his, into his flight system that maybe is time dependent or has these weird exponential functions overlaid onto it. And so whenever he's flying around, maybe the longer he flies, the more rapidly, slowly the accelerators work. Or maybe he goes to particular regions, it acts really funny. And then this UPS, it's a new thing, and it's built into the new U phones in the future, which don't work. Um, so basically, let's say that thing gives on top of the normal signal, it has like an exponential function as a function of time or something like that. And basically, by adding these weird nonlinearities to the action command and the data, you start to get very strange uh, distributions that don't follow this linear rule. And with that in mind, you cannot use this Kalman filter. Like I said, you can use this thing called the uh, extended Kalman filter and things like that. But we're going to show a non-model based way of dealing with this situation. Okay? Okay, so let's, let's, let's give a, a good conceptual example of this. So here we got is we got our Wally guy. Okay, there he is. He's got his mustache. And he's got his body. And there's his body again. And there's his wings, and they're all, I messed them up, but maybe that's a cool style nowadays. He's got a human, he's got his hair combed over. Okay. And so, you know, he likes to go out, hit the town, and so he's, and the town, of course, is a matrix, because that's all the future is, is a bunch of matrices. Matrices, that's what the future is, right? Everything's in some boring, weird-looking kind of dot matrix, old green screen. Okay. So there he is, and what, again, what we're interested in is the probability of the hypothesis t, given hypothesis t minus 1, given our action, and given our data. Now, before we were modeling it with functions, now what we're doing is we're going to model it with, a, with particles. That's what the particle filter is, particles. That is samples. We're going to sample from the distribution. So rather than trying to build a model of you know, the, the function where we think he's at and updating it with some action command and, and manipulating that function and then adding some data to it and changing the function. We're just going to use raw data points. So let's say he's here and we have, we assume a prior of like Gaussian, a Gaussian distribution. And so what we do is we generate particles around that expected mean value with a Gaussian distribution. This is the Monte Carlo component of this. You have a distribution and we randomly sample from it to generate these points. So that's where we think he is. Now he's bored, he doesn't want to stay at home, he wants to hit the town, and so he goes up this way. So before what we did is we updated the function, right? We updated the function with the action command. But now we're going to update each particle, each sample. So I'm going to take this particle and I'm going to update its position based upon that action command with system noise, the process noise, right? Remember, there's noise in his jetpack or anti-gravity system. And the same we update the distribution and, and update its noise, update its, its distribution. We update the position of this based upon that noise as well. So maybe he'll go here, and then all the other points get some new positions around here. So this is our update on where uh, the action command should say he is. Then, of course, what we do is we update the sampling, the observation. If he's here, what should we observe? We have a model for that. We have to have a model for what the UPS sensor is going to look like. And so the UPS is going to give us, the universal positioning system <laughs> is going to give us some values. And they're going to be like some blue values overlaid on top of these, right? It's going to be maybe some different number. Remember I said there could be nonlinearities in that uh, transfer between the actual position and the uh, UPS output, right? But then we get our data, right? We get some sample that says, Oh, we really think he's here, this is value Z. So we really think he's right here. Now, what we want to do is we want to combine these data points in some meaningful way to get a better estimate of where we think he is. I mean, right now we can just take the mean value and that'll give us some uh, position. But we want to use this actual observation data to improve our estimates, right? You know, some of these points might be really bad, some of them might be dead on. We don't know. But we can use this data to help us and get rid of points that are bad and keep only the points that are good. And that's what this can give us. Let me uh, draw how it's going to work on the next page and we'll come back. Put that there. So let's, let's just draw this in 1D. And we got our value Z and we got our probability. Now, what we had is we had a bunch of observation points, right? We had these points. This is what we observed. I'm just drawing a straight line of that. They're not so uniform, right? And then we get our actual value. This is our actual observed value Z. 
what we can do is we can go, well, for a given point, let's take this point here, what is the probability observing this z, this actual value z, given that this point is true? That's saying, if this point was true, if where, where we observe this is really where he is, what is the likelihood of getting this value? Well, since we know our measurement noise, and we know it's Gaussian in this context, we can, and whatever you know about it, you use that to model the likelihood that this is going to occur. So in this case, we model it as a Gaussian distribution. And we go, well, what is, given this, what is the probability of this? Well, let's say it's like around 0.05. Then let's look at, say, this one. Uh, okay, that wasn't the best. And we say maybe that's 0 0.7. And then one right next to it, I drew that bad. Let's say that's like 0 0.9. And so if we remap, if we remap these values onto the, the observation data, we basically weight all our observations. In this case, it's going to have a Gaussian distribution around the actual value, by and large. And basically, each point now has a weight of how good it is in a certain sense. This says, based upon this data, you know, how, how, how can we improve the weighting of this? And this is the way you do it. You say, if the data was accurate, what is the likelihood of getting that observation we just got? Let's go back. So what we had here is now that we, all these points are weighted. Some of them are weighted high. Maybe this one's weighted really low. This one's weighted high. Because what we did is we just basically each point got a projection back of the weights that we got from the observation data. So now all these points have a weight on them. Maybe this weight is really low. Maybe this weight is really high. Maybe this weight is super high. And now we resample this distribution based upon those weights. We randomly sample this distribution using its weights, its weighted values, and we're basically going to start to only sample more the values that had a high probability rather than the ones that had a low probability. And it's going to tighten our distribution. So if I just drew like a, a circle around the ones, maybe all these here are going to stay, but these ones on the outside aren't, for example. Then we could do some measure. Maybe we take the mean value or take the variance or whatever, and we'll get a new, better estimate that's data informed. That's how this system works. Now that we have these new data points, we have a new estimate of where, where Wally is, then Wally commands again. And we take these new data points, and then we do the exact same thing again. Reiterate, iterate, iterate, rinse and repeat over and over and over again. So what is the idea? We got our prior estimates that we get. We then move them, we transform them using the action command with some noise. We have our new positional estimates. We then weight them, well, well, then we uh, transform them into the observation data, whatever the observation function is. We have our estimates and we transform them based upon where we, what do we think the observed output should, should be. We weight them using the information we get from the actual observation. Now we have all these weighted estimates and then we, take a, then we resample to tighten the distribution around the more likely ones. Then we take, for example, the mean value of that and that gives us our new um, estimate of where we think uh, Wally is, and we keep doing that over and over and over again. And that's it. That's the whole system. What I'm going to do now is a, an example of this using a very, very nonlinear system, and then we'll do a MATLAB implementation.